I would very much like for this to stop. Hi, my name is Sydney, welcome back to hell. And of course, before we launch in, today's video is sponsored by Buffalo Reclaimed Flag Company. And also, of course, by me. Because new designs just dropped in my store. Finally, there is a brown eyed devil club design and some other things that I thought were funny. It's Klaus Schwab from the WEF, riding a bug. Come on. I especially like this one because it's true. So go to my merch store, check them out, subscribe to my email list while you're there if you so desire. Do this and I will begin building my Sydney clone army. Now, if you are somebody who is terminally online, then you're already aware of the many ghoulish things being done to our pudding people. And if you aren't terminally online, then some of the things we will discuss in this video might make you wanna fling yourself into space. In only a few short years, the emphasis on transgender children has exploded. And so too have the number of children identifying as anything other than their biological sex, including all the made up genders that nobody asked for, but we got anyway. Some states and countries have attempted to reject this completely. Only recently, Texas stepped up its action towards surgeries on children. The head of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services said that gender-affirming surgery, as they like to call it, those damn progressives, constitutes as child abuse and genital mutilation. In a quote, she said, this surgical procedure physically alters a child's genitalia for non-medical purposes, potentially inflicting irreversible harm to children's bodies. Generally, children in the care and custody of a parent lack the legal capacity to consent to surgical treatments, making them more vulnerable. With this in mind, for most people, it seems unconscionable to think that anybody might be performing irreversible surgeries on young people and teens. It seems understood, at least in part, even by kids who think they're transgender, that performing these kind of surgeries too early on can have lasting and irreversible consequences that cause further issues down the line. I know. I see your Reddit posts. Even these young people acknowledge that if you have top surgery, as they call it, and remove your breast tissue too early in life, that can set you up for more issues and more surgeries later on. Not to mention all the botched surgeries that take place in the nether regions. Ah! But that doesn't stop some ghoulish surgeons from carrying out these surgeries anyway. And that is what we're going to talk about today, because this is by far one of the worst things to come out of gender theory and radical intervention. And it's all being directed at pudding people. But before you once again board my hell gondola and I take you on yet another beautiful journey, let's hear from today's sponsor and a small American business that I love to support, Buffalo Reclaimed Flag Company. Some people like stone, others like fabric. You wanna know what I like? Fighting commies? Wood. I like wood. Not like that, you sicko. Enter Buffalo Reclaimed Flag Company. Buffalo Reclaimed is family owned and operated out of Buffalo, New York. They make incredibly cool handcrafted wooden flags made from 100% American materials, down to the glue and the screws. That's right, not made in China. Made with American hands. So much freedom. The lads over at Buffalo Reclaim sent me this flag, which I'm hanging in my dining room because why the heck not? And I'm genuinely impressed. It's the perfect weight, not too heavy, so it's easy to hang. The craftsmanship is really, really nice. And I love that they have a huge range of options on their website, including several different flag sizes. Yes, you can get a big boy. Of course, in addition to the range of American flags available, you can get dictator flags, English flags, or if you don't see what you want, you can get one customized. They even have historic options like the Gadsden flag. The next one I order, I'm going to request they make me this. Beautiful. So click the link in the description and use code SYDNEY for 15% off. Support a small American business and get yourself a neat flag. At the end of 2021, writer Anna Slats wrote about a doctor based out of Miami who allegedly performed a double mastectomy on a 13 year old girl. A double mastectomy being the snippety do of your baby feeders. Dr. Sieve Gallagher, and yes, apparently this word is pronounced sieve or sieve, I don't know, Ireland, get it together. Originally from Ireland is actually well known for performing these kinds of surgeries. In fact, she has quite a popular TikTok talking about just that. Why do they always have a TikTok? 
According to Slats, Gallagher became most associated with her infamous catchphrase, yeeting the teats, a flippant joking way to refer to performing cosmetic mastectomies or breast removals to her primarily underage female audience. Of course, I would like to show you some of the TikToks she's made, but they all have copyrighted music. And we don't play that game here. So while I'm talking, I will play a few over my voice so you can see how this probably appeals to depressed young teenagers because that's what TikTok does. Very good, taking advantage of young people. I also just find it creepy bragging about how people getting mad at you for deforming kids means that you're happy because you get followers. I don't know, it just feels weird. Anyway, in December 2021, a user on a forum called Kiwi Farms found that Gallagher allegedly performed a cosmetic mastectomy on a 13-year-old girl. While looking into Gallagher, the user, Falling Star, noticed some social media posts associated with the purported patient. In this screenshot, the alleged patient says that she stopped looking for surgeons at Gallagher, given that she was one of the only surgeons who would operate on someone her age. The patient also noted that she started testosterone at 13, had been seeing a psychiatrist since she was five, and also had been attending a gender clinic for a few years. The girl is also actively pursuing a hysterectomy, a total removal of the uterus, and states that she will likely have it by 15. Which is a lot to unpack all on its own, which I'm not equipped to do, because I'm not a psychiatrist. But apparently they're not even good at their jobs, so maybe I am. Do you suffer from issues of abandonment? Any issues at all? Now, it's worth noting that on her website, Gallagher says that the clinic is happy to offer top surgery to minors with consent of parents and the recommendation of the patient's mental health professional. When we evaluate each patient, we keep in mind the risk-benefit analysis and understand that it may well be much more detrimental to the patient to wait until 18 years of age for surgery. And this is honestly not too dissimilar from what I saw on other surgeons' websites, with many in this field indicating they will operate on minors, but with parental consent and letters from mental health professionals. Of course, the main argument to this is that young people grow up and change, and they change their minds. Especially if you consider the aggressive push of gender theory onto children, it's likely that, and it's proven that, a large portion of them will come to outgrow their gender confusion. Because a lot of it is man-made. Well, it's not really man-made so much as it is woman-made, considering that the majority of teachers in schools are in fact women and the majority of people pushing this appear to be women. Surely, you are a great mind of our age. Performing mostly irreversible surgeries on young people and teens is, in my view, and I'm sure in the view of many of you, completely unethical. And the reality is that in probably most other comparable situations, it would be unethical. In her research, Anna Slats, the writer I referenced earlier, noted that it is entirely possible to get a letter from a healthcare provider regarding surgery for as little as $150. Here is this website, Plume, that says they offer letters of support for gender-affirming surgery. They also promise a one-week turnaround time if a healthcare professional determines a person is medically eligible. I'll add as well that this website is for those who are 18 to 65, but even for someone who isn't a minor but determined to do this to themselves, in some ways it appears worryingly easy to obtain medical permissions. Anna and her team also said that they reached out to Gallagher's office posing as a parent looking for top surgery options for their 13-year-old non-binary child. Despite explicitly providing the child's age, the clinic attempted to book a consultation, noting that the cost of the surgery would be around $10,000. Now you're probably thinking that this is an isolated case, but no! There are other ghoulish doctors who are performing surgeries and taking advantage of young people. Now let's do a little gear shifting towards Joanna, or Johanna, I don't know how to say this woman's name, Olson Kennedy from Children's Hospital LA, a pediatrician who believes that there should be no minimum age for a double mastectomy. In this study, she notes that patients for chest surgery should be considered based on individual need rather than chronological age. In fact, here is a clip of Olson Kennedy justifying enormous adolescent decisions. She also adds that if you want breasts later in life, supposedly after you've had them removed, you can just go get them. I'm just gonna say this, but actually people get married when they're under 20. Actually, people choose colleges to go to. Actually, people make life-altering decisions in adolescence. All the time. All the time. And honestly, most of them are good. 
it's just the bad ones that we talk about. Oh my God, the cinnamon challenge, right? I mean, why do we know about it? Because it's it's a thing, and it's it's not it's not common. Like most teenagers aren't eating cinnamon, right? But some are, and they're on YouTube, and that's stupid. But we don't put on YouTube the things that are really good decisions, right? Oh my gosh, my kid took the SATs. Not a very exciting after-school special, right? But so what we do know is that adolescents actually have the capacity to make a reasoned, logical decision. And here's the other thing about chest surgery. If you want breasts at a later point in your life, you can go and get them. Ah, mm, yes, you can just get breast implants to replace the natural tissue that was taken from you at a time when you were 12 years old because you didn't know that major decisions cannot be reversed. I also feel like getting married at under 20 and cutting off your body parts are a little different. These things. They're not comparable. Stop trying to pretend they're comparable. In the paper I referenced earlier, Olson Kendi describes top surgery outcomes for girls as young as 13. She looked at 68 girls who had undergone this specific surgery. 33 of these girls, almost half, were under the age of 18 at the time, two were only 13 years old, and five were only 14 years old. Assuming these mastectomies weren't all performed by the same very busy surgeon, that means there are multiple doctors out there willing to operate on 13 and 14 year olds. She also advises that women and girls with chest dysphoria should have their breasts removed first and then, you know, begin taking testosterone later on. What kind of life advice is this? Who lets these people near children? Another practice in Oakland, California notes that the youngest person they performed surgery on was a 12 year old. Although the youngest for bottom surgery, as they call it, was 16. Yeah, I think folks have kind of covered the blockers and, and hormones, but I'll talk about surgical care a little bit. Uh, in terms of masculinizing top surgery, I think 12 is the youngest who's had surgery through our program. Um, and in terms of general reconstructive surgeries, we haven't had anyone under the age of 18 have uh, phalloplasty or lingerieplasty, but we have had uh, a few patients uh, starting 15, I don't think surgery actually happened, until 16 that have had vaginal plasty. From the same discussion, pediatrician Dr. Alana Scherer Sharer, Shearer, said that she feels challenged when she comes into contact with children who are not suffering from gender dysphoria. The challenge she is referring to comes from the fact that it is much harder to get a doctor to sign off on a child and insurance companies to sign off on surgery when a child has an absence of dysphoria. Again, what comes out of this is what do we do about the kids that don't need therapy? Right? Like, I really struggle. There are lots of lots of kids that I see that don't have dysphoria, that really don't have mental health issues. And so to say to them, you have to go get a letter from a mental health provider, feels challenging to me. And so what we started to do in our clinics is have someone like Diane or Mare go in and do kind of a brief assessment and give their, I know you said you don't rubber stamp, but you know, basically in, in my mind, that's sort of what it, what it feels like. Um, so that we can say, okay, now we can move on and talk about what you're actually here for so we don't get kind of caught up in that. In case it wasn't clear, if a child is not suffering from dysphoria or doesn't have some sort of mental distress relating to their sex and body parts and what have you, these doctors will find a way to rubber stamp the issue anyway and sign off on it so that child can take the next steps, whatever they may be. If this also wasn't clear, if you're somebody who wants to cut off your healthy tissue no matter the age, you probably should be seeing someone about that. Maybe I should be a therapist after all. How do you feel when you dig up my yard? The doctor who said she does the aforementioned rubber stamping appears to be the same psychologist, Diane Ehrensaft, who is a huge proponent of early childhood social transitioning. This refers to children adopting names, clothing, hairstyles, pronouns, etc. of the opposite sex, or the sex with which they identify. This 2018 article spoke to therapists at UCFS's Child and Adolescent Gender Center Clinic in San Francisco, socially transitioning children as young as three. And I think it's fair to assume that doing this would make it much more likely that a child would want to medically transition a couple years Years on. You know, if you start telling your child from the age of three that they are in fact a lump of clay, then you might find a couple years later they might just want to sit out in your garden. 
and be one with the world. If that was a joke, that wasn't remotely funny. In my travels of the internet, it became clear that Reddit and other websites like Transbucket are places where young gender-confused people can go to find surgeons and discuss who might operate on them at younger ages. One doctor in Toronto said he would perform breast removal on teens as young as 14. In an interview, he admitted to performing two surgeries on 14-year-olds and several others on 15 and 16-year-olds. Another doctor in Montreal allegedly performed surgery on another 14-year-old who, three years ago, credited herself as one of the youngest people to have top surgery in Canada. Now, a friend of mine told me about a clinic here in Texas that performs surgeries on young teens. So I had my friend Ariel Scarcella call up to confirm. I'd have called myself, but you know, I'm just, I am <laughs> really awkward and very bad at pretending to be the mother of a gender-confused child, which is what Ariel did actually for the purposes of this call, which explains some of the things that she says in the following clip. Full disclosure, there's about five minutes of footage, and at the beginning of the phone call, the woman on the phone tells Ariel that they now cannot perform surgeries on anyone below the age of 18 due to proposed law changes here in Texas that mean that they would be turned in if they, you know, mutilated a 13-year-old. The woman on the phone goes on to say this when Ariel asks the age they used to accept for top surgery. What, what, what about before this law change, how old... How old was the was the limit? Like, what was? Because obviously, we're really we upset were, about this. Personally, we were twelve and over. Twelve um, and as over. Long as, the, mm -hmm, as long as the the child had already met um, all the requirements and had been in therapy for a long time. Okay. And, um, you know, had followed all of the the guidelines, and there they were on hormones, or the therapist was already following them and is recommending this next stage. Right. Okay. Um. Uh, but. Yeah, as of right now, um, literally when that first mandate came through, they dropped our malpractice insurance for the doctors. Oh, wow. Um, instantly for anyone under 18. Um, well, that makes sense, surgery. right. And then they um, they said that not only we were supposed to turn in the parent, but we could get turned in. This is a clinic here in Texas that up until recently used to perform top surgeries, breast removal on 12 and up in Texas. A red state, and arguably in a red area. <sighs> I hate it here. We even have doctors doing TED Talks arguing that the minimum age requirement for sex reassignment surgery should be lowered and correspond with years in a person's preferred gender over their biological age. This doctor also discusses a transgender child called Avery, who is biologically male, and well, you can listen for yourselves. And in fact, as transgender people are more openly being able to seek therapy, the demand for transgender surgery has increased by five folds over the past five years. And one may think that the preservation of surgery is a valid one, but in reality is not very relevant or valid. 18 is the age in which minors are protected from making permanent decisions about their reproductive health because the thought is then at 18 they can decide what they would like to do. However, if as soon as pubertal blockers were added and then estrogen was added to her therapy, Avery's testes never developed. In fact, she does not make any sperm and her reproductive capability to be a biological parent has been eliminated. Her testes are non-functional. And in medicine, don't we often recommend the removal of non-functional organs, like an appendix? So therefore, does it make sense for Avery to wait until she's 18? Or should older adolescents be allowed to have surgery before the age of 18. And if you're wondering how we got to this point, well, I did say that this is hell. Very hot. Lots of magma. This TED talk is really something else. And the speaker, the doctor, says the word girl penis more frequently than I would ever like to hear, ever. I just, I don't like this. As a daughter with a penis, as a girl with a penis, her testes and penis. Some states like Oregon and Washington have removed the need for parental consent and being an adult 
to access gender reassignment surgeries. But more than that, I think a lot of this comes from the concern that if we don't institute these kind of policies, if we don't force people to use specific language, and if we don't perform surgeries on 12 year olds, then these people will become much more likely to commit suicide. And maybe in some situations that is and could be the case. That is the prevailing narrative after all. But other doctors who have attempted to speak out about detransitioners or those who regret their gender reassignment surgeries, or even data and information that contradicts the current narrative, they are isolated and find themselves out of a job. Something that also occurred to me is that if children don't even need to have gender dysphoria to be considered for these surgeries, then are they still at risk of suicide if they aren't suffering from any mental disorder or discomfort with their existing gender? Conversely, what about the kids who access these surgeries after being groomed by their parents, the education system, their friends, and so on, and come to find out that they identified with their natal sex the whole time? Is their suicide somehow less interesting and relevant? Detransitioners, as they're called, are often shooed out of the limelight because their experiences are inconvenient to the transgender movement. But these are people who transitioned and came to regret their decisions, often made at an early age. And some of these stories are genuinely tragic and horrifying. Yeah, so maybe you shouldn't let your 12 year old yeet their teats. No snippety do for your tiny young ooh. Another component here is given to us in a Federalist article that I highly recommend reading and I will link in the description. It tells us about Dr. Lisa Littman of Brown University who published a study in 2018. Littman analyzed 256 survey responses submitted by parents of newly dysphoric adolescents and uncovered troubling information about the environment that influences these teenagers. She found that gender dysphoria outbreaks happen in friend groups where multiple or all members become dysphoric and trans identified in a pattern that seems statistically unlikely. Parents report such outbreaks usually followed binge watching of YouTube transition videos and excessive use of other social media that affirm and advocate transgenderism. In one case, for example, a girl who had been teased about her breast size declared that she hated her body and suddenly began identifying as a boy. In another, four girls who were taking instruction from a popular coach came out as transgender after the coach did. Something that I personally found most interesting right off the bat was that these children were mostly female, expressed a non-heterosexual sexual orientation before identifying as transgender, and many had been diagnosed with at least one mental health disorder or neurodevelopmental disability prior to the onset of their gender dysphoria. Letman also noted that many doctors did not address past trauma or mental health issues before proceeding with medical transition. As Letman says, gender dysphoria may be used as a catch-all explanation for any kind of distress, psychological pain, and discomfort that an adolescent is feeling while transition is being promoted as a cure-all solution. While there are many ghoulish doctors who do take advantage of children, there are also lots who do not and who will not not operate on those under the age of 18. And there are also institutions that are set up that advise against operating on minors. More than anything, the ghouls who are prepared to operate on literal children are disgusting to me. And it is so disturbing when you realize just how many people they have in their arsenal so that they can achieve these ends. In any other situation, it would be considered extremely unethical to remove healthy tissue from a healthy patient. But that in and of itself is another part of this conversation for another day. The problem is that doctors like Gallagher, for example, are targeting and preying upon children, and they're using their platforms like TikTok to do that. Maybe some of these other doctors actually have their hearts in the right place, but I'm sure a huge portion of them just see these opportunities as cash cows. I usually try to see the nuance in situations and bring a balanced perspective and a balanced take to the things that are going on in society, but, you know, <laughs> honestly, in this case, it's just not okay with me. And I can't see any real reason why a child or a young teenager should be making decisions like this. And I don't understand how parents stand by and let this happen and how doctors are able to operate on people who are not making informed decisions. And as you heard for yourself in the multiple clips in this video, if these doctors and surgeons have their way, the safeguards that are in place to protect children will be removed. In the end, this is yet another area that concerns children that disturbs and upsets me. 
But you know, I am really happy to be able to shine a light on some of this for all the parents in the room, because you must protect your pudding people from the scalpel people. Now, on that note, before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder that you can check out Buffalo Reclaimed Flag Company using the link in the description. Support a small American business, and when you do, you'll receive 15% off your order. Now, open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? Is this actually a big issue? Is it being blown out of proportion? What do you think of these doctors and them using TikTok and things to go after young people? What do you think of operating on 12 and 13 year olds? Is this unethical? Is this necessary for the children who are suffering from dysphoria or not suffering from dysphoria? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you wanna leave a comment for free to do so, just be respectful about it and I will see you guys next time.